Hello, it's Professor Forney, and this is a brief tutorial on how to prepare your manuscript uh, for delivery of your speech of commemoration. Uh, and it, this is, again, as so many things in this course that I've said to you before, it's not rocket science, it's common sense, but it really, it, they are very important things to help you deliver the speech effectively and feel comfortable as you're giving it. So, let's get started. Manuscript speaking. First of all, by itself, a manuscript speaking is reserved for special occasions. It's not something you're going to do a lot in your career or, or in your private life either, but you certainly will at some time, probably, almost certainly, give a speech that will require that you write it out in its entirety and deliver it from a manuscript. However, with that said, most speeches that you'll give in your future uh, will be uh, the extemporaneous variety, just like the two speeches you've given already, where you deliver them from brief notes on cards from your own memory. But uh, manuscript speaking is usually a presentation. The reason we do it is because it's for a presentation where every word must be exactly as you want it. Uh, you do not want to, for example, be giving a eulogy uh, and forget a very important part of the person's life or misstate uh, dates or names that the person uh, knew uh, or places that they were, any of those things would be an example. But also, for example, if you're called upon to give an address to your uh, in the future to your colleagues in a profession, uh, perhaps you're at a convention and you're asked to make a presentation, well, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you, you know what you're going to say and you're not going to stumble and you're also not going to forget things that are important uh, when you're a bit nervous, un under stress, etc., it's good to have your manuscript there. The thing about manuscript speaking, then, of course, is, as I certainly said just a moment, just, just just now, is that they could include technical information that must be carefully worded. And again, going back to my example, uh, let's say if you're speaking, if you're a lawyer and you're speaking before your fellow uh, members of the legal profession, uh, paralegals and other lawyers, you're going to, you can include technical information, but it also needs to be carefully worded so you don't stumble over it and you sound intelligent as you're delivering it. So preparing it. How do you prepare this manuscript? Now I already talked to you about preparing the manuscript in terms of writing it. You want to write it in 12-point font, either Times New Roman or Arial, and you want to double space between the lines. And I gave you the rule of thumb that about 15 lines typewritten at 12 point, uh, uh, a single sheet, that 15, should 15 lines should fit pretty much on a single sheet. It's going to be about one minute spoken. So uh, again, if you have, if that's the case, then you're probably going to have maybe four pages uh, at 12 point level when you prepare your manuscript. But here's some tips to help you also then avoid simply reading that to your audience. And so it has to do with, of course, the, the readability of the script for you when you're up there giving your speech. Double space the script. Well, that's already you've already done that when you were writing it, but just double check again that it is indeed double spaced. But here's a tip. You use a font size that's no smaller than 18 point. 18 point will be quite large and easy to read from a distance. Uh, use black ink, obviously, but and make sure it's a good clean ink you know it's not like gray or something but it's really good contrast ink but 18 point uh, font is going to be easy for you to see looking down without having to squint at it or be very close to to the script itself and so so therefore you're going to be able to read it easily and naturally uh, because you're sort of seeing it out of the corner of your eye even though you may not be looking directly at it you can still see the words even though you're, you know, you're partially looking down through the bottom of your your eye uh, vision. Here's the other tip: when you print this manuscript, print it only two thirds the way down each page. Do not, you know, use a full page of of copy uh, to try to give a speech from. Make sure the bottom margin is set at three and a half inches, so that three and a half inches of the of the sheet is blank at the bottom. Uh, and so, of course, that's going to increase the number of pages you're going to have uh, because you're not going to be using them, uh, you know, a whole page to print. So you may have eight to ten pages in a speech of the size you're going to be giving. But it also it all makes it easier then for you to look up at your audience, as I said. Now, another tip that's very, very important. As you're typing your final version, uh, 
uh, regardless of what it was, your preliminary version was. And once you convert it to 18 point, and you are going to, you know, you're going to have it uh, printed uh, two thirds of the way down. When you type, and, and you come to the end of a page, make sure you do not break a paragraph in half or a sentence in half. In other words, you do not want to begin a sentence on one page and have to turn it to finish it on the other. It's very awkward for you to do. And the same thing even with paragraphs. Uh, if you know the par because a paragraph really talks about one thing one idea or one concept, it's best that they always be together. So don't, don't split them between pages. If they don't fit on the end of the page, move the whole thing, the whole element over to the next page and you'll be better off. It enables you to look up at your audience as you finish a thought or a page because you're not wondering, you're not having to fumble with the pages to find out how it ends on the next page. It's all there for you. Then comes the matter of once you get it all uh, typewritten and uh, word processed, then you're going to want to mark up your manuscript. Now, you can mark it up manually if you want to. You can uh, put notes in the margins, but I'm going to show you some other things here. What you're doing, you, when you give speaking from a manuscript, you want to use gestures. Uh, and speak with good vocal variety and enthusiasm. But it can be really challenging with a manuscript because often it will sound like you're, if you let it, it will sound like you're just reading. And nobody, you know yourself, nobody wants to be read to. Barring puts everyone to sleep. So you want to put visual reminders in the speech itself. Again, as I said, maybe in the margin or maybe within the actual text so that you will not neglect such things as gesturing, uh, so emphasizing key words that need to be louder or stronger than the others, slowing down or speeding up in certain passages, all those things are the kinds of things you want to make some notes perhaps to indicate in your script that that's what you want to do at that particular point. So here's another thing that I suggest for you. Use a different color, a different font, uh, or, a high, or highlight directions so that you won't read them aloud. In other words, you certainly, for example, don't want to put them just in the regular type uh, or, or even in parentheses. You might be reading along and say, uh, you know, Mark uh, uh, Jones, uh, point to Mark in the audience. Well, you get the idea. That's kind of embarrassing. So you want to make sure that that gesture that you, are, you want to make is, is in such a way that you know that it's, it's a stage direction if you want to think of it that way. It's like marking up a script for a play. So, for example, use this, something like slow down. If you're going to use slow down, put it in red. And, you know, red indicates stop, slow, whatever you want to call it. Yellow would be kind of hard to read. Uh, another one would be gesture. Uh, when you want to do a particular gesture, you can actually make that more elaborate, say gesture to or point at, something like that. Point to picture, for example, would be another one. But again, all these things, notice that they are in, uh, they're in what we call carrots. These are carrots. And a carrot is an unusual uh, character in uh, type font in that it indicates that it is not part of the actual uh, copy, the actual text. In other words, it clearly is not something that you're supposed to read, unlike something that could be in parentheses, which you could read. Uh, but with this, it really indicates that it's not part of the text in order should you read it. You also want to underline any key words or statistics uh, that, you, that you want to emphasize as you're reading them so that you know when you get to it, you slow down and you really put emphasis on them for effect. Then there's a matter of arranging your manuscript. One of the things that, again, is to do clearly number every page of the script uh, and always put the number at the same place on, is, on each page. So start say for the upper upper left hand corner and each each other page is also numbered in the upper left hand corner. I suggest using something like a sharpie uh, which you get a nice large number but you know the number one and circle it and, and make sure and then every other page in the same place in the same uh, methodology so that it's very obvious what page you're on and you know that you're not skipping pages. Certainly do not staple pages together uh, because it's, you, it's awful. You're going to be fumbling with it. it. It's not something. The pages want to be loose so that they're easy for you to slide or turn uh, any way that you can do it. Now I've suggested to you that 
one of the things you might want to do is have your stack of, of on one side of the lectern uh, this is your speech as you read a page slide over you saw someone do that in one of the speeches that you saw student speeches that you saw where they slide over the page to the right side meaning that page is finished you don't have to actually turn it you can just slide it over but that's going to take something else I'm going to show you in just a second another po possibility is also to put it in a ring binder you know, just get a, you know, use one that you've already got. Take the stuff out of it just temporarily. Put your speech in there. You saw Steve Jobs brought his ring binder to the podium at uh, Stanford when he gave his speech. Makes it much easier to turn the pages. Uh, even you could put tabs if you want to on it uh, to, to, to delineate the number, the page numbers. Any of those things are good. But here's a key thing. Use sturdy paper. And by sturdy paper, I mean this. Copy paper of the type that you would normally print on or copy on uh, machines is very flimsy. And they tend, as you already know, they tend to gather static electricity, they'll stick together. Any of those things make it hard. So you're looking for a more heavyweight paper. And the best that I can point out to you is paper that looks like this. This is, you know, you recognize it as stationary paper. The kind of paper that you would, say, for example, put your resume on when you were going to send it out to a prospective employer by mail, you would print it on something that, that you know, nice looking paper, but certainly when you feel this paper, you know it's heavy because it's what we call rag content paper. Uh, there's actually cloth in there, but but it also prevents it from being, st uh, static electricity does not build up and the pages are, will not stick together and they're very easy to turn. Uh, so, and, and if you're going to do this, I mean, you can buy just a small amount of this and, and what they call a little resume kit at the at the bookstore, or but better yet, go to Drexel Copy, and just tell them you want to buy, say, ten pages of you know paper of that, that is rag content paper. It would be cheap. Uh, probably ten pages cost you maybe a dollar or something like that, too. But you know, don't buy a whole ream. Of this paper, five five hundred pages, or something you're never going to use. You may never use it, and you may already have some of this lying around. But use it to print the, uh, your script on, so that it's easy to handle. And getting ready to make your speech, make sure you practice enough that you're familiar with the pages, so that you you know you don't have to read it. But you know it's there. You saw Steve Jobs look down at his at his speech occasionally, and certainly, but. He, Clearly, he was very familiar with what was on those pages, but he still had his manuscript there in front of him, just in case uh, he needed to refer to something there. Uh, be able to anticipate where you can look up from your script as you practice. Think of the places where it's going to be easy for you to remember what's coming next, and that would be a place where you could look up at people uh, and look them directly in the eye and then go back perhaps to lowering your, your vision to your speech. Be familiar with the pronunciation of the words that you're going to be reading. Don't put words in that you're going to that look good, in you know, in, on paper, but are going to be impossible to, to pronounce uh, or put together as a string of words. You know what I mean. There are words, certain words that look good, but when you try to say them, they don't come out quite the way you want them. You saw an example, I think, of that in the Steve Jobs uh, slip-up that he had in his speech where he says, sometimes life hits you in the head with a brick. Well, it's a little hard to say. Um, and he didn't say it right the first time, and he had to repeat it. I've told you this on so many other occasions. I'll tell you it again. You cannot practice a speech in any other way except doing it aloud. And I strongly suggest, again, that you do it in front of a camera so you can not only hear what you sound like but see what you sound like before you get up in front of the class to make your speech. And you get the real thing when you video yourself. Video does not lie. Uh, do enough rehearsing that you do not stumble over words or hesitate to look up at your audience members regularly during your speech. Uh, nothing beats being prepared by having rehearsed it to the point where uh, it is, it's going to be, you're very familiar with it, and it sounds natural, even though, yes, you are reading, it doesn't sound like you're just reading to people. So I hope that helps you, and I look forward to hearing your speeches of commemoration coming up uh, soon.